Hello. In this video we will define the concept of an adjoint of a bounded linear operator T between two Hilbert spaces X and Y. As background motivation we note that if we let Y be a fixed element of Y then we can define a bounded linear functional on X such that its value at X is the inner product between t x and y and this functional is indeed both linear and bounded but since phi y is a bounded linear functional the reach representation theorem implies that there exists a unique element zeta y of x such that all the values of this functional are given as inner products between the point x and the fixed vector zeta y. And from this we can immediately observe that since zeta y is unique and exists for every fixed element y, we can define a mapping denoted by t star such that the value of t star at y is defined precisely to be the element zeta y. This operator, which is called the adjoint of t, is indeed a well-defined operator from the whole of y into x. And if we substitute the definition of t star y into our previous equation, we can see that the adjoint satisfies a nice identity with the inner product of on x and y. As a more precise definition for a bounded operator t, we define an adjoint of t to be an operator satisfying the inner product identity shown here. And this is indeed possible since on the previous slide we saw that at least one such operator exists. And in fact, what follows is that the adjoint operator turns out to be unique and it's also a linear and bounded operator from y to x. And finally, as a nice additional property, the operator norms of t and the adjoint are the same. The adjoint of a bounded operator satisfies several nice identities and computation rules for sums and scalar multiplications and compositions of operators. And these properties, as well as the inner product identity in the definition, may, may look very familiar as the basic properties of a conjugate transpose of a matrix. And indeed, it is the case that if we interpret an n by n matrix as a mapping from the Euclidean space Cn to Cm, then its adjoint is precisely the mapping which corresponds to the conjugate transpose of this matrix. One of the first natural questions that arise is how can the adjoint of a particular operator be computed? And here we benefit nicely from the uniqueness of the adjoint operator and in particular, a good starting point is to begin with the expression of the inner product of Tx and Y on Y, and then aim to modify this expression so that it has the form of an inner product of X with another vector zeta in X. And this vector zeta will then be precisely the image of the vector Y under the mapping T star. And sometimes it's even possible to directly identify a linear operator S from Y to X, which produces the directly the vector zeta in the you know, product identity. And in this case, the adjoint of T is precisely this operator S. And we can now take a look at a couple of examples on computation of uh, adjoint operators. 
and we will first consider the Hilbert space of square summable sequences and study the right shift and left shift operators. These operators have the effect of shifting the elements of the sequence x either one step to the right or one step to the left according to the names of these operators. And if we want to compute the adjoint of the right shift operator S SR, then we let X and Y be arbitrary sequences. The inner product of SR, X and Y is defined as the sum of the elements of these two sequences with the elements of the sequence Y conjugated. By definition of the right shift, the first element of SRX is always zero and the rest of the elements are exactly the elements of X but with indices shifted by negative one. This way first term of the series drops out because of the zero and we arrive at the expression stated here. But this sum, which begins from the index 2, can alternatively be written as a sum beginning from index 1 if we shift both indices with, with 1. But what we arrive at is exactly the inner product of the sequence x with a sequence where the elements of y have been shifted by one to the left which is precisely the action of the left shift operator and because of this we arrive at the inner product between the sequence x and SLY. The uniqueness of the adjoint then implies that uh, because this inner product identity holds we the adjoint of SR, the right shift operator, is precisely the left shift operator SL. And if we in addition want to compute the adjoint of the left shift operator, we can use the property that the adjoint of the adjoint of an adjoint is the operator itself to see that the adjoint of SL is precisely the right shift operator. As our second example, we can compute the adjoint of a bounded linear function all phi on a Hilbert space X. And for this, we can use the Reed's representation theorem, which implies that there exists a unique element zeta phi in X such that the values of the function of phi at x are given as inner products between x and zeta phi. To identify the adjoint of phi, we can first note that phi maps into the Hilbert space of complex numbers and the natural inner product on this Euclidean space is the multiplication of two complex numbers where, where the second one is conjugated. And with this in mind, we can form the inner product between phi x and the complex number y as the product of these two complex numbers where the second one is conjugated. Using the Reed's representation theorem, we can replace here the uh, complex number phi x with the inner product between x and zeta phi. And now using the anti-linearity of the inner product with respect to its second component, we can take the scalar conjugate of y inside the inner product into the second component and in this process the complex conjugation also is removed from y. 
we can identify that this last expression indeed is an inner product between x and another vector in the space x. Because of this, the second vector will exactly be the value of the adjoint of phi at the point y. And this leads to the property that the adjoint of phi is the bounded linear mapping which for a given complex number y multiplies the fixed vector zeta phi with y. And this definition of the adjoint of phi is often written more compactly in the form that phi star is equal to zeta of phi. And in this kind of notation it's also typical to consider the space B, C, X and X to be the same space 